What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG career mode, it's episode number 8 and we're returning today with the playoffs. Yeah, finishing third in the championship table with Pittsburgh against 6th place Watford as the Saints will face Middlesbrough in the other uh, playoff tie as well. I've got to be honest here, I think we're favourites for it, we only lost one of our last 16 games, we've been on an absolutely amazing run, we've barely lost a home all season long, we did finish the highest out of the four. I think we're ferrets to this. And facing Watford, who were well below us, the Saints and the Bar as well. I think for sure. Failure to get for at least a series would be an absolute bottled job. So, yeah, first game of two. But fingers crossed, hopefully, really should be free. Playoffs with our first leg away at Vicarage Road. Come on, you swans. For this leg, you might know. So, I took a lot of changes to the team. You know, no Jamal Lowe, no Liam Cullen, no Patterson. All due to fitness reasons, this game coming just, I think, two or three days after our win at home to Bristol City. And, also worth pointing out, our last away day was a loss against Stoke. So, that being the case, I mean, it's it's, it's not something which I'm expecting to be easy. That would still be a bottle if we do fail to make Wembley. Generally, Kanunen, AK, rifles in the opener. Yeah, no Humphreys, no Tyman, no Patterson. AK says, don't worry about Jamie. I'll take a position and fire us in front. Swans take the early lead in half this year. And it's a Finnish Academy grad who opens the scoring. Yeah, this is why third place was so important to me, man. With all due respect to Watford, like, again, again it's, it's a good team. But they only just clung on to that sixth and final spot. If you look at the table... Saints and Middlesbrough both could have ended up in third on the final day, whereas the, uh, whereas the Hornets, they were well behind us, all, all three of us in, uh, in six. Would that be in the case? Finishing third, getting this seeding was going to be the, uh, the big bonus, if you will, to closing out the campaign and win exactly what we did. Up by a goal as Elliot List finds Kanunen, the goal scorer, pokes it through to Yates, and there goes List, our first signing in. Bought him in for the pace. And he's, oh, he should have banged in our second. He was side of Blackman, and that's probably a second. In the end, a reasonably comfortable save despite the power. It's still leading by one, and that second goal is definitely on the cards here. Ginnelly, cross cleared. Darling, to List. And if he gets on the, oh, sugar snap peas. Oh, that's even worse. No, did I not get the ball forward? I was giving it a chance for Watford in our final third. Pedersen's hit the deck. Against the Spria, who's got round him. What a back! Oh, what a brilliant reverse pass to Rushworth. We just about got away with that. We could have been through for a second goal down left hand side. Gave it away and almost saw our lead gone. Still leading by one, but a let off there, courtesy of Carl. Easy. Easy. Don't dive in. Rushworth again. Another big save by Carl. We're hanging on in to close the first half out, man. Hanging on in there. Good game this day. Really good game. I say this a lot, but like, yeah, it's cool when you dominate and win big, like 3 or 4-0. But to me, these are the more fun games to play when you're, when you're very, very nervy. Because every attack could easily result in a goal. It's a great tackle by Harry Darling. And it's so tight. It's so tense. And it means if you do win it, you feel brilliant, you know? This is one of those games, man. Very, very tight. Great game to play this. And we're getting booked for descent, I think. As uh, we still lead it by one. 17 to go. Can we hang on to it? Corner whipped in. Grimes doesn't do enough with a header. Back heel, Kone on the edge. Pollock! Oh, what a goal! What a goal! He's just looted in top bins and Watford, to be fair, deserved the equaliser. They've got it, but what a goal! I think that is going to do it. What a first leg. Watford, the Hornets, big underdogs for it. But they've said, guys, do not rule us out, man. Do not rule us out. That was a, a brilliant first leg to play that, man. Really enjoyed that. Going back to South Wales, though, even tied at 1-1. I think we'll still be fairest to make Wembley, you no know doubt about it. Our record at home in the second half of the season has been incredible, man. Cracking foot, that was so fun. And directly after the game, uh, we see that Bashir and Jamal's loans are about to expire. Definitely want them back for uh, for next season, I know that about that. And uh, Obeta is uh, going to leave and join Levante on a free con the end of the season. That's totally fine because we're really overloaded at left back, man. Pedersen, Timon, um, um, and um, that uh, Dutch 
Cho Cho A on is that how you pronounce that? I guess you probably know how to pronounce the name of my player, but you know what I'm talking about here. The uh, Dutch-born Indonesian uh, talent as well. Uh, right, well let's just jump into the uh, the following game then, uh, and that is indeed going to be. I know before that we've got our final scouting report. We've got about our final scouting reports here, and also uh, tattoo that uh, CDM is going to become a right winger. Watch this overall change here, guys. Bang! Up 14 to 62 overall. And again, this is why when you see a player that you're scouting and he's got a very low overall range, but his stats look really decent, the chances are he's just playing in the wrong position. This guy was never a CDM, but as a winger, oh goodness gracious, he looks absolutely fantastic. Next year, Ari Littmanum? Well, quite possibly. But hashtag Dr. Uscan, where are we sending our scouts out to next? Well, here's our final ones from Wales, where Charlie Connick is definitely going to get a scholarship, no doubt about that. Tony Wood could be all right, but again, look at the creme de la creme here. I think I'm going to be very selective and just give one to Charlie and let everyone else go. And from Finland, it will be the man who's so good. They named him twice, Leo Leo. But man, how, how, many, how many Finnish Academy goalkeepers are we going to have? We've got three, that's ludicrous. And from Spain, just a one player getting a scholarship, and that is Ricardo Alvarez. Potential range, not the best, but the starting overall is quite exciting, I must admit. So, uh, right, uh, let's do it then. The second and final leg of our two-legged affair, um, obviously, as we take on Watford here in South Wales. Once we did draw the first leg, it was a really tense affair. I feel confident back home at the Swansea.com stadium with the Swans fans behind us, we'll be able to get over the line and make the playoff final at Wembley. Second leg, Watford at home as we go for a place at Wembley in the playoff final. Come on, you Swans. Just like the game of Vicarage Road, man. This is tight, this is tense. Hang on. Oh, no, 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 no. Is he on? I think he is. Ginny! Ah! Oh. Was indeed on, but I fired it well wide. This is, this is tense, man. I can see this going pens. Watford still tied of us at 0-0, despite being the big underdogs. To be fair, they've played, they've played some really good football across both legs as well. So they, they've, they've surprised me. Do you know what? The Hornets have really surprised me, man. Ishmael's got him playing. He's got him into the playoffs, and, and rightfully so. Doxy, oh, Doxy boy underestimated him. They've, they've given me a bloody good contest, and to be fair, fair play to them. Caprianu, Ginnelly, Key sent down the right. And the excellent mirror man just couldn't poke it through. We'll win it back, though, and then give it away. My God, this has been a tough game. And... Oh, come on. That's a lovely ball through that. Paradez, careful, careful. Yeah, good block. Well, mate. Just don't give him a clear sight of goal, man. Don't give him a clear sight of goal. If you're going to score, you have to break me down, generally. The Cypria gives it him back down the right. Jamal Lewis to beat. He stood him up well, but then wins it straight back. There's Jerry Yates. Get in. Come on. Yes. Jerry Yates, who's blown on Colby with this year, might have just scored the goal that sends us to win. This has been a tight contest, man. And Swansea have the lead in South Wales. Great hustle by Gin Lee, and our number nine finishing like a number nine should. Swansea break the deadlock. Right, it's the final minute of normal time, and I've got to say, man, fair play to Watford, because I, I, I was so, so deterred. Hang on. Oh, balls that up. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. And it definitely wouldn't have done converted that. But in the end, I will not need to. Fair play to Watford, man. Do you know what? Like, I really underestimated them. Fair play. I love it when a big underdog stands up to a clear favourite and says, no, you're not going to brush me aside, mate. It's not going to happen. Fair play. I really wanted third so we could face the sixth seed. In the end, that was a tough one. But we have come through courtesy of that man. Swansea have made the playoff final. Tough game now. Fair play, Watford. That was a real tight one. I'll tell you what, if we do end up going to the Premier League, the kind of players and that, uh, that Watford team would not mind with me. Because they, uh, they gave me a problem, man. And uh, as we see after the game, you might have just seen who we've got there. I advanced through. Their second leg was played the day after ours. But it is indeed the Saints who overcame the borough. And if I'm being totally honest here, I would have preferred them anyway because our record against the Saints this year was played 2-1-2. I think with the borough, 
I think we actually we lost, didn't we, at the Riverside? I think we did. But with Saints, we beat them back to back, including at St Mary's. So, yeah, I, I probably would have preferred them over to Borough anyway, finishing fourth. But it is indeed the Saints at uh, Wembley for the playoff final, as the Saints will try and complete the clean sweep of the trio that went down, all going back up. The Swans looking to pull off. The victory that will send us through to the Premier League. Right, uh, three youth players on Saturday. Hang on a second there. So the first was uh, Tapio Hermilinen, who, to be fair, looks like the best academy goalkeeper we've got. And for next season, we know that Fisher's going to go. Rushworth might not come back from his loan spell. Who knows? Tapio might be thrown in at the deep end there. And um, we'll give him a scholarship. What do you have to? Emir Powell. Is he the highest rate one we've got? I think he is. Yes, he is indeed. CM 74 to 88 potential. But again, he's playing deeper than he should be. I noticed that so often over the past two or three FIFAs. Youth players that are playing deeper than they clearly should be. And who was the other one that wanted a uh, pro Oh, Rodri King. Rodri King. Where's Rodri King? Where are we here? Dun, 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 dun. Can't find him. There he is. Um, 78 to 84. You know, I'm, I'm going to be honest here, like I said before, I, I, I do want to look for the creme de la creme, and I know some of you guys pointed this out in my loot and career mode that we just finished, that sometimes releasing youth players kind of feels pointless, you can just promote them, then sell them if you don't want them and get a bit of cash, but to be honest here, my CMs aren't all about strategy, not all about strategy, and I don't want to just populate the game too early with too many new gems. I talked about that before on my live stream a couple of days ago. Sometimes that's when the save loses a bit of interest for me, when there's just too many youth players. Okay. Uh, when there's too many youth players in the uh, in the, uh, in the the save too early. Right, uh, here we go then. Uh, championship playoff final. It is Southampton. And I would say it's dead even for this final here, man. It could go either way. The Saints, though, we did beat back-to-back -back this season, both at Mary's and in South Wales as well. So, I feel confident and I'd still call us favourites this one here, even though the Saints do have, arguably, the slightly better team. Dead even, though, I'd say. Could go either way. Playoff final, Saints versus Swans, as we both look for a return to the Premier League. Come on, Swansea City. Oh, I bloody love a playoff final, me. I really do. Like, no matter what division of the top three uh, professional tiers they are outside the Premier League, you know, League Two, League One, or Championship, I love a playoff final. I watch all three every single year. And, um, you know, my team, Millwall, have been involved in four over the past, like, 15, 16 years. Um, and I've been to a couple. Not the most recent two. I didn't go to the most recent two. Um, but back in the uh, the late noughties, in League One, we had... Uh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, Mason Holgate read that well. Uh, we had uh, Scunthorpe, and we lost it 3-2, and it was heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, did see one of the best goals I've ever seen live in that playoff final, though. Gary Alexander just launching one from range on the volley. Um, and then the year after, we beat Swindon. And that was like pure elation, do you know what I mean? Going from like heartbreak one year to elation the next. But playoff finals are great, man. Again, so, so fun. I know, I know. As painful as they are to lose, believe me, like I said, you know, that's gone for the game still in my mind. Yeah, an absolutely unbelievable feeling when you come out on top. Hopefully we'll be able to do the same here with the Swans. Kunin and Jamal playing the 1-2. And AK-47 giving it odd to start here. Grimes has space to let fly. And that's not too far off target. Good start. Good start, but still gold is at Wembley. Deadlocked at 0-0. But at the moment, Southampton can't get out of their half mark. Kunin has done brilliantly well there as well. Fulton... I just passed cut out. Well, oh, Jamal wins it back. We get one late chance. Oh, ref. Okay, all right. Well, to be fair, Saints haven't had a sniff in that first half. Defending high on the front foot, not had a sniff. At the moment, if anyone's going to screw it, it'll be us. But it's very, very tense. No clear-cut chances. I do think the game will open up in the second, though. Yeah, you know those games where they're slow burners, but eventually they open up. Eventually they start to grow a bit more fluid. I think this is, uh, this is one of those games. It's Bashir. Pokes it through the gap. Lovely ball. Jamal, no! Oh, flag was up anyway. Wouldn't have counted as he took it on early. And we're still tied at 0-0. But yeah, I, I, I see this game opening up in the second. And to be fair, we've defended really high at the pitch. And Southampton have not been able to get inside at all. 
Very, very aggressive defending, and I like that. Oh, into the middle. Oh, my goodness. He sure is opening up. Will Smallbone <laughs> going for a Decani Oesca scissor kick at Wembley, and that was not that far off target. This, this, is, this is what we were waiting for. First half was terrible. This is a lot better. Game starting in... Starting? Starting to open up. Ross Stewart out wide. Bukhari with Josh Tymon to be. Watch that pass. Oh. Oh, I'm going to concentrate here. Yep, thank you. There we go. <laughs> sometimes, I, I know I've seen some comments. Sometimes I know I do go quiet because I've got to concentrate, you know. Jamal said I want to keep holding the ball there if not get away. Yates will be onside there. Generally, I want to block. And is it a pen? It's a pen. It's a pen off Jan Benderek. I want to see that on the replay because to me, I thought he blocked the shot really well. But a penalty given. Oh, actually, do you know what? I'm not too sure about that. I think he has clipped him first. That's it. Oh, I'm not sure about that, you know. I'm not sure about that. I want, to see, I want to see that on the replay. I might just have to chip this. I'm not sure. Did he catch him first before he shot the ball? It was hard to see from that angle there. Ball pegged back to Ginnelly. No, that's never a pen. That is never, ever a pen. What on earth has he given that for? How, how on earth is that a pen? In what world? He's not done anything wrong there. You know... I chip it for debatable ones, but for a moment like that, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a, that's a that's a ridiculous decision. I thought he might have just clipped him before he shot the ball, but no, that's a that's a shocking decision. Nah, no way would that uh, that be given. That's awful. That and I can't even say the Saints have been let off there. It was, it was a great piece of defending by Jan Benderek. Referee just uh, punished him for nothing. As Bashir does well there. And Tymon slides it through. AK wins it. 1 2 with Jerry. We'll play advantage, ref. Kanunen. Kanunen. Oh! Sitter. Taken off Yates for uh, Cullen. As Liam finally makes his first appearance in the playoffs here. Jerry's had an alright game, to be fair, but. Liam has been my top scoring striker this year. There's a bold call not to start him. In the end, I might well regret it. Oh, ref, that's a soft free kick. What are you doing today, ref? Honestly, this is shocking refereeing. But six to go, still tied at 0 0. Nice thing, Stan, heading for extra time. Forget, forget that non penalty. That miss by Kanuna was bad, man. Yes, granted, weaker right foot, but even so. Even so. Saints looking to win it. Joel Arebo. What a save, Carl Rushworth. I said this game was going to open up in the second, and it definitely has. My goodness, that was tense. Tense, tense. Awful. Shocking first half. Shocking refereeing. But a lot of action in that second half. Half an hour to go, but I think Stan is going to pens, man. Two minutes to go, and that's going to be ours. This is going to be our last chance here to win it. Kanunen, Cullen, Jamal Lowe, Jamal Lowe, Liam Cullen for the win. Shot blocked to the corner. Our final chance of the final. Corner, Swansea going to give it to AK for the delivery. It's a good one. It's Cullen. What a save. Brilliant delivery. Free header. Joe Lovely forces the spot kicks. What a save. Either side of him, we win the final. What a save. Penalties it is. I do not know how I've not won that final. I really don't. Golden chances and I've spurned them all. Yes, okay, the non-pen is including that in the XG there. But even so, that take the non-pen out of it as Adam Armstrong gives the Saints the lead. I can't believe I'm going to bottle this.
I'm not feeling one bit confident. Liam Cullen, who missed that chance, has it saved. Joe Lumley's been amazing. Saints are going up. Saints are going up. Jamal Lowe must score, really, and does, and keeps us breathing for now. Carlos Alcaraz, Luton icon, oh, scores. Saints are going up. I, I, I don't think I'm going to save one. I really don't. Skipper sends Joe the wrong way, but... Yes! Can't rush away. I've got a score, though. I've got a score. Generally. Got a score to level it. Come on! Back on level turns, but Carl, I need you again. Ryan Manning. Score as cool as you like, and that means... Jay Fulton, I don't feel confident. Jay Fulton has got to score. Oh, yeah. Sends Lumley the wrong way. Capaldo. Oh. <laughs> Good as you like. Key. Right back next man up. Man, I need another save through Carl, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to put it off. Key. That's, that's a solid pen. That's definitely going in. Oh, yeah. Keeper goes the wrong way anyway. James Bree. Saved! Rushworth! AK! 47! The kid! The finished star! To send us to the Premier League! Swansea City bailed out by the Finnish rifle! Swansea escape on the spot kick to Wembley and are heading to the Premier League. What a moment! What a final! One of the most incredible goalless draws we'll ever have. And the rifle keeps his composure and gives us the win. Swansea City are heading to the Premier League on penalties. When we were 2-0 down, I did not see us doing this, man. I thought I'd blown it. I thought I'd absolutely blown it after Cullen missed the opener. But Carl Rushworth, an AK-47, the real heroes. Swansea are heading into the Premier League. Come on! I think this win here is a case of good karma coming back to us. Missing that clear non-penalty, doing good, getting good, winning it on the spot kicks. In the end, very fitting. Goodness gracious me, man. Honestly, when, <laughs> when Cullen missed that penalty and then we went 2-0 down, I, I, I just thought it's over. It is over, man. We are going to regret missing that non-pen. I, I still would have stuck to it. I still would have said I'm glad I did it, even if we lost the spot kicks. But in the end, Carl Rushworth, the hero. Two big saves, including in sudden death. An AK-47. Mr. Sitter in normal time, lest we forget. Coming up clutch to 17-year-old, sending us to the Premier League. And definitely deserved it as well, man. Non-penalty aside, take that out of it. We were still the better team. We missed some sitters in that game. Again, the AK miss on the 101. Liam Culler with the free header at the death and extra time as well. That should have been a winning moment there. I absolutely bottled it. But even so, deserved to win. Got there in the end. Swansea are heading to the Premier League, courtesy of a dramatic penalty shootout at Wembley. My heart, honestly. <laughs> Goodness gracious. It's not it's not quite a Felipe Marcano or Brian Carrasco Champions League winning penalty, but it is a youth player netting a shootout winning penalty. And that is fitting for a dock save. 
Oh, we've done it. Boys, we've done it. We are up to the Premier League. I said we were ferrets in this playoffs, but to be fair, it was nowhere near as routine as I thought it might be. We only just overcame Watford, who I thought would brush aside, and against the Saints in the final, I thought we'd be favourites, and in the end, we had to do it on the spot kicks. But Swansea are indeed up, and we are going to the Premier League. Buzzing. Hang on, what is this? What on earth is this? Boss, I've got to be honest with you. I think me not getting games is starting to damage my career. I want to get away and make a fresh start somewhere else. What are you talking about, Ben? You, you, you've been my star man in the back line all season long. You just started that championship playoff final. And not getting games. You played 37 of the 46 and all three of our championship playoffs. What? What is that? EA, I'm sorry, man, but this is ridiculous. That's just pathetic. What is that? What is that, honestly? That's that's put a real damper on things, man, as Kimo Leo jumps up to 60 overall for the... That, that's just stupid. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just pathetic from EA. Like, what? what is that? That's pathetic. That, honestly, that, that really ruins things, you know what I mean? What What is that about? That's, 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 that's honestly, that's just annoyed me. That's really, really annoyed me. I, d I don't want to sell him within England either. Go, go into Ajax in, in the Netherlands. They've obviously struggled this year in real life, but that's, that's just, that's just pathetic, man. 37 of the 46 games, unless we forget, due to fitness problems, obviously, and due to fixture congestion in the 46 game season, obviously he's got to, he's got to miss out of a few, but that's ridiculous, man. That's just so stupid. Sorry, guys. I, I, I know I, I don't like to lose my temper. I don't like to, you know, sound angry or whatever. You know, you know that's not me, but I, I apologise. I'll leave, I'll, I'll leave it and just, just calm myself down. Um, right, uh, Reese Healy was the, uh, the Golden Boot winner in the challenge this year. Steffi Mavadidi right behind and a Leeds duo of Joel Perel and Jay Nanfany with Ross Stewart finishing in fifth is how the top five were wrapped up. Uh, Jamal Lowe made a top eight with 14 and Liam Cullen was right behind with 13 uh, for this season as Jamie Patterson in the end won the assist title. Canoon at 11 in 14. Goodness gracious, what a debut season AK-47 had as Melier uh, won the Golden Glove this year with 21. Rushworth right behind with 20. As for the domestic cups in England this year, Liverpool won the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup was won by Manchester City overcoming Arsenal in a final, blockbuster final four. But uh, Man City winning it back to back, overcoming the Gunners at Wembley. As for the European honours, well, in the Conference League, as you'll see, Aston Villa made the final, but in the end came up short to Fenerbahce on penalties in the Conference League. The Europa League saw two English sides make it, including Liverpool and West Ham, but they were both knocked out as Roma beat Dortmund in the Europa League final to win that. And as for the Champions League, I showed you the groups in a previous episode from the last 16 onwards. Uh, this is how things finish. Manchester United knocking out Real Madrid and then losing to Arsenal in an all-English affair. And in the end, the Gunners would face the holders in the final, who they themselves won it once again. Manchester City, FA Cup and Champions League winners, but did they win the Premier League? The answer is yes. Back-to-back -back trebles for Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. That, that is absolutely absurd, man. Back-to-back -back trebles as Brentford, Luton and Sheffield United were relegated from the Premier League this season. And I'll also do League 1 and League 2 whilst I'm here as uh, Bolton and the Rams were promoted back to the Championship uh, with Blackpool, Barnsley, Reading and the Posh making the playoffs so you can't find out who won that. And the bottom three of League 1 being Port Vale, Carlisle, the Cobblers and the Brewers. And as for League 2, back-to-back uh, -back promotions for Wrexham, Stockport County with the winners though with MK Dons in third. Uh, the playoffs being Notts County, Bradford City, Doncaster and Tranmere Rovers in the fourth and final professional tier in English football. No shocks to the winners of League 1 as Paris Saint-Germain ran out massive winners by 22 points to win the French top tier. Harry Kane finally captured that elusive first major honour in his career as Bayern finished 16 points clear of Bayer Leverkusen in the Bundesliga. Inter Milan back on top in the Serie A with Lazio, Roma and Milan making up the top four in the Italian top tier this season. Rangers uh, champions of the Scottish Premier League this time out 
And as for La Liga, we'll end on this. Real Madrid, three points clear of Barca, Atletico and Sevilla, making up the top four in this season's La Liga. And so the final thing we'll do together, guys, is run you through the team as we conclude season one with a massive high and then a massive low. Looking at the lineup for next season, honestly, man, we're going to need to try and replace Ben Cabango. He's our highest rated player, 74 rated. Big reason why our defence was so good this year. I'm fuming about that. Absolutely fuming again. I'm sorry, guys. I'll calm myself down now, I promise. But uh, yeah, for, for next season, no doubt about it. We're going to have to replace Ben Cabango big time once that move to Ajax goes through. But there's there's a lot to be excited about, man. Also, you've got the academy's fantastic. A couple of great young talents already coming out, including Kanunen, of course. And we'll take a look at uh, Hermione and Powell's potential in just a moment's time as well. But no doubt about it, going to the Premier League, Will will be the weakest side for next season, obviously, no doubt about that. Carl Rushworth again, second uh, best goalkeeper in the division. Do we bring him back permanently from Brighton next year? I I would probably say so. I think he deserves it, in my opinion. It was, it was a good for us this year, man. Yes, a couple of goals he let in, I was a little bit sus about, but I, I think he deserves to come back next year permanently if we can afford him. Hermione, no exciting prospect. We'll try and loan him out for uh, for next season. Uh, as we run through the uh, the back line here, as we know, Beta is going to leave to Levante for the new season as well. I'm definitely going to sell Nathan Cho Aon. Bet barely used him, to be fair. And at 22 years old, yeah, he could still get a bit better, but I don't know how much better he's going to get. Kyle Norton is, of course, retiring, so totally fine with me. Uh, Harry Darling up three ratings this year, and, and now Cabango is going to go. Probably going to be our best starting centre half next season until we buy someone. Uh, Nathan Wood's only grown two ratings at Irox. That's disappointing. I was hoping for an overall spike, unfortunately. It has not happened as Ben is uh, again on his way to uh, to I I'm fuming, absolutely fuming about that man. But yeah, Humphrey style I'll definitely try and bring him back, man. The injury really stopped him in his tracks. But for next season, I will look to bring him back on a permanent deal from Chelsea. I don't know if he'll be good enough to start in the Premier League at 67 overall, but whether he does or not, I'd like to bring him back and if nothing else, at least try and loan him out. Uh, Josh Key, I used him a bit more in the second half of the season than I did in the first half. 68 overall, not too sure he's good enough to start full-time in the Premier League, but I definitely do want to keep him. I'm not sure if I'll bring back Harrison Ashby for next season. He was all right, to be fair. I, I used him most in the first half of the season, and I swapped over to Josh Key in the second. But he did get me a goal and two assists as well, so maybe I'll bring him back from Newcastle, but I'm, I'm not too sure. 22 years old, 65 overall. He's got a long way to go, I would say. For Joe Allen, by the way, he's at a contract coming at the end of the season. Whilst he's not retiring like Yannick Balassi, I'm going to let him go on a free, man. We love Joe Allen at an academy, but he's going down rapidly in his mid-30s. I'm, I'm okay letting him go. I've got no use for this guy in the Premier League. Jay Fulton, I might look to sell in the summer. 30 years old, 71 overall. And to be honest, he's okay. He could be a decent squad player in the Premier League, but really, he doesn't offer me much. He's, he's the sort of player who, I'm sure you've got them as well, as like a DM or a CM, he only really passes sideways or backwards. The one assist kind of sums that up. I barely get forward with this guy. He doesn't really offer me much when going forward. A lot less than Matt Grimes, that's for sure. And again, Balassi like Joe Allen. I'm going to let him go come the end of the season. He got me four goals. He got me an assist, but at 35 years old and declining rapidly, it's going to be a one and done for Yannick Balassi. Streets won't forget. Streets won't forget. But uh, he, uh, he won't be lining up for Swansea next year in the Premier League. Matt Grimes, for sure, though, 28 years old, the captain. Definitely staying with us for next season, no doubt about that. 73 overall, and certainly the DLP that I want, uh, if, uh, if not Jay Fulton, to start in this team. Emir Powell. Oh, wow, no potential. Really? That's a surprise. That I did not expect that. I might just sell him in that case, to be honest. But uh, even so, um, uh, Jamie, Jamie Patterson, top assist maker in the championship. Didn't get on with him at the start. I was really struggling with him. But he bought himself one extra year. And he might well have bought himself another year as well. One goal and the top assist maker in the championship this year with 15 assists. Anton Kanunen, though, second right behind him in assists in the championship. And, of course, scoring... That winning penalty as well. And of course, don't forget, he scored the opening goal in the semi-final first leg at Vicarage Road as well. The future is very bright for Kanunen. Just how many games you'll start in the Premier League at 64 overall, I'm not too sure. But I'm predicting an, a, a, a potential upgrade. And I might actually try and loan him out for next year and keep him in the second tier. Josh Ginley, position change, really did him some good. He went 16 games without a goal and then scored 8 in 19. Really impressive from Josh Ginley on that left or right-hand side. 
and uh, it turned out to be one of the most important players in the second half of the season. And as for Jamal Lowe, on loan from Bournemouth, even though he's not going to be growing anymore at 29 years old, I want him back. In my opinion, he was my player of the year. 14 goals and 6 assists in 29. Always believe in your soul. You've got the power to know. I'm bringing him back next year. Jerry Yates, blue hot and cold on me. I wouldn't mind, to be fair, keeping him for another year, but... I'm not too sure. If a big comes in in the summer, I'll probably let him go. He's not growing anymore at 27 years old. It might be best just to have one and done with Jerry and keep faith with uh, Liam Cullen, who in the end, of course, had a much better goal-to-game ratio, even though he did miss the first penalty in the shootout and that sitter of the death as well. He might not have been a big game player there, but he was still my top scorer this season with 15 in 29. And Jimenez with six assists. And for Elliot List as well, fair play to you guys, man. Made him my first signing. And he was a really good impact sub off the bench, if not a starter. Elliot with four goals in 18. Again, practically every single game came from the bench. Right, guys, that is it. We shall leave it there for the season finale. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I will return in the next episode with the start of the new season. So, guys, in the comment section down below, I'm going to need your help. We're going to go into the Premier League with statistically the weakest team. And we're going to lose our best player before the first game even comes around with Ben Cabango's deal to Ajax about to be completed imminently. So, guys, I don't know how much money we'll have for the new season, but I don't think it'll be much. I'll need your help for transfers in the comment section down below. Today, I need your help. Give me your transfer suggestions for the new season. We'll need to replace Gabango. I think we'll need more goals. I think we'll need better fullbacks as well. Really, I think we'll need better players all over. But please comment down below. How do we improve this Swansea team? Let me know your transfer targets. Have a great day. Much love. And I'll see you for a brand new season as Swansea got to the Premier League without Ben Cabango very soon. Much love, guys. And I'll see you for the first episode of Season 2 very soon.